Yeah, okay, great. Thanks very much. Hi, hi Wayne. Um, six changes, is that a bit less consistency than ideally you'd have hoped for for such a big game? No, well, clearly with the English-based players coming in, um, there was going to be some change. And then with the injuries that we sustained in the match, there was always going to be some change. Um, so, yeah, we, in terms of our planning coming into the campaign, the first two games, uh, we'd want to settle in uh, to more of a, a settled squad, I guess, from here on in. Just uh, maybe the the front row, there are quite a, quite a lot of interesting talking points there. Reese Carey, I suppose, the starting point, but but hookers, Bradley Roberts coming in, Will Griff John on the bench. There's there's a lot in the front row to discuss. Yeah, um, Dylan Lewis uh, sustained an injury in the game, so he's got a plantar fascia issue. Um, so there was a change made there. That's through injury. Uh, the hooker one, uh, both Brad Bradley and. Um, Kirby came in a day apart, really, so they've had about the same amount of time. Um, neither of them have had international experience, so we're going to learn about both of them. Uh, and in terms of the front row, we thought um, Reese did well coming off the bench. Obviously, we know that the South Africans have a strong starting front row and a very, very strong finishing front row. So, you know, we could have gone either way, really, but um, it's probably a bit of a reward for, for Reese. and, um, yeah, just doing it the other way around this week. And behind the scrum, uh, the likes of Johnny McNichol keeps his place. Nick Tompkins coming in. Just explain your, your thinking there. Yeah, we're really uh, rewarding Johnny for a good performance. We thought he played very well. Um, you know, he's very creative. He was good under the high ball. We know there's going to be a lot of um, high ball work to be done again this week, probably more so than last week. So that'll be a good test for him to see if he can back that performance up at this level of the game. And um, certainly he's excited by that opportunity. And it, it enables us to ease Liam back into it with uh, the volume that he's had in terms of training. Alice Jenkins, that's quite a story. Man of the match against South Africa two years ago, injured in the last minute and making his international return. Just what sort of shape is he in? And just give us a picture of what it's taken for him to get here. Yeah, sorry, just to finish off the last question, and, and Nick Tompkins as well. We so. just feel that he's um, he's a, an informed player. He's been in, in great form for Saracens. Uh, he's come into training. He's um, He's been very impressive in the, in the short amount of time he's been with us. So, look, we want to see Nick in there um, and uh, looking forward to seeing how he goes. Uh, Alice, yeah, what a story. Very similar to Gareth, isn't it? Um, you know, probably not how we wanted to play it originally. It, it, it's not really going to the, the script that we had planned. Um more, more of a seven, really. Uh, but with the injuries that we do have to six, uh, Alice has gone across and it allows us to play two sevens, which will probably hopefully have some benefits in terms of the breakdown work. But I'm um, just pleased for him that he's back in. Um, he was desperately unlucky not to sort of get to the close to the finish line in terms of the selection last week uh, with that rib injury sustained in the last Blues game. You obviously know the, the challenge South Africa will pose. There's a lot of focus on how the Lions played against them, how Wales won the Six Nations last year in a very different way. What can we expect from Wales in terms of style of play this weekend? Well, look, we want to build on last week. We want to try and be positive where we can, but we've got to be sensible as well. Um, we know the threat that South Africa bring. bring. They're, they're obviously world-class. They've just won the last World Cup. And, and in their last game against New Zealand, they won it. And uh, they've got a magnificent set piece. Um, so discipline is going to be a key. Uh, you know, try not to give them too many set pieces uh, because they're very, very strong in that area of the game. Aerial threats as well. Um, so but we're going to have to be on top of our game. But... You know, when we do have possession, uh, if it's on, we'll look to uh, to try and create some uh, scoring opportunities where we can. So with, with those two All Blacks games in particular, that it's quite hard to impose a running game against that South African defence. Have you got anything up your sleeve? Any any tricks you think? Any weaknesses you've seen in them? Well, I, I agree. It is, it's a very, very strong defence, isn't it? It's, it's world class and it's uh, probably what won them the World Cup. So, yeah, we've, we've had a good look at uh, where we think we can... Uh, some gains in terms of our attack so we'll have to be on our game though everybody's going to have to um, you know look after the ball in contact because there's going to be some big contacts whether we like it or not and um, you know where we can find space whether that's off the foot or, or through the hand that's what we tr- will be trying to do Thanks very much Thank you Hi, Wayne how are you doing? Good thank you um, Just to double check Ken Owens how's he looking because obviously he's missed the first two with his back what's the latest on him please? Yeah, look, if we can get him right for Australia, then um, we'll be we'll be happy with that. So he's uh, he is improving, but um, with a back, you know, it just takes time. So it's it's really a race against time for Ken. And in terms of Alan Wynn, uh, the press release on uh, mentioned that he was out for months. When do you expect to see him back? Is he avail- Could he be back for the Six Nations, or is it longer than that? Do you think at the moment? 
Oh, look, no, I don't think he'd be available for the Six Nations. Before the end of the season? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. In terms of coping without him and how you know how much longevity he's had, how what's the challenge with that? Yeah, look, it's going to be uh, it is going to be a challenge, and I tell you what, you learn a lot about um, the worth of people, don't you? When uh, when they're, they're not there, so I think a lot of people take Alan Alan Wynn for granted. You know, he's he's always been there, and I see him as a, as a, having a lot of longevity. He's got seniority, but look, that leadership is really important. We've already seen it this week, you know, with Alan Wynn not there, and then already having lost Ken, and then the the likes of that, uh, Justin Tipperick, your sort of go to leaders, if you like. Uh, so now it's it's really the asset is on others to step up. You know, the Adam Beards of the world, obviously, Alice Jenkins brings experience with him in terms of leadership. So, you know, other guys, now it's their turn to stand up and um, and take that role on. And in terms of Alan, when he obviously had another year where he needed to the next summer, do you think something like this could extend it even further to the next World Cup? Oh, the intention is always to see if Al can get to the World Cup. It's, it's, it's a goal. Uh, I think it's a realistic goal, personally. Um and uh, you just got to see him in training, and, and then when he is playing, the, the efforts that he put in, that he puts in. You know, um, I don't see anything going uh, anywhere near backwards in terms of his performances. Um, so look, yeah, a bit of time off. We spoke about this before Al left camp, and uh, yeah, it's not ideal for him. Um, we're all looking forward to him playing 150 Test matches for Wales, um, but that is still uh, still a goal, and uh, I'm sure he'll get there. And you spoke last week about the sort of fitness, the last quarter, Wayne. I mean, it's not something you can perhaps fix short term, but what are you hoping that you will see in the final quarter this week that you perhaps didn't see last weekend? Yeah, well, I think um, we're a little bit stronger uh, in terms of the bench in, in certain positions. Um, we've got uh, you know a couple more players available. So, look, the fitness was a big issue. Um, it's, it's the early part of the season for us. Um, certainly, we haven't played any test matches for a while, so you've had that. Obviously, the Lions boys had a bit of a break. So some of them had one game, two games of rugby up against sides that are test matched hardened, if you like. So that was always going to be an issue. Um, but certainly, we'd like to uh, improve on that performance from last week. No doubt about that. And final one from me. What have you made of the South Africa 23? Yeah, look, very strong, very strong, uh, world class set piece, world class defence. Um, and they're a side that, uh, you know, as I say, just recently beat New Zealand. So it's going to be a big, big challenge. Anyway, and obviously Gav touched on uh, Alan Wynn there. Did he have a message for the squad before he uh, left camp? Oh, Al, Al um, got a, it's no big sort of uh, farewell speeches at all. It was uh, like any other player that left. Um, he's got around and spoken to the boys, uh, probably individually more so than uh, as a group. We certainly didn't have a big farewell. Um, it's, it's not a nice time for anyone to leave camp. So, yeah, he's just wished everyone well. And obviously now we wish him well in, in terms of a speedy recovery. And, and one of the areas that faltered a bit uh, last Saturday was the line-out. Uh, same hooker start this weekend, same line-out call of start. So have you managed to sort of identify the issue and, and, and what can you do in a week to sort of remedy that? Yeah, look, they're fine, they're fine margins, you know. Um, at this level of the game, we're trying to hit the ball at the top of the jumper and, uh, you know, occasionally it's a combination I think sometimes it might be a little overthrow. Sometimes it might just be a little bit of timing in terms of the uh, the lift and jump. So, look, we're working on that, um, obviously, uh, virtually on a daily basis because if we're not doing it live, we're doing some walkthroughs. So it is something we're addressing. Um, Hook is a, uh, an area where we've got two new boys in there. So, as I say, they've both had an opportunity in these first two, two games and uh, Ryan being the senior uh, guy has got the responsibility to start the game again and we, we're we sure that um, you know he'll work hard to to get some of those rem- uh, remedies, some of those issues. And of course, whenever you play South Africa, um, the kicking battle gets mentioned, uh, whether you like it or, or not. New Zealand seemed to find a fair bit of joy sort of later on in the second half with Wales' kick chase. Is that something you've identified? How do you sort of see that battle going on Saturday? Yeah, New Zealand were excellent, weren't they? We fell off a few tackles um, and and probably at the end of the day, uh, we didn't have enough in the tank. So we were exposed in that area and uh, you rightly point that out. In terms of South Africa, look, they they have a huge kicking game. They're very good at it. They're very good at clattering in the air. They get a lot of that ball back um, and it puts teams under pressure. And when you have clatter in the air, a lot of times you're getting scrums. It goes back to their strength. Um, scrums, often there are penalties. You go to the corner, you get the line-out drive going. 
So it, it, we know what's coming, and it's uh, a lot of work being done by Neil uh, Jenks with the boys in terms of aerial receipts and making sure that the crumbs, that the, the bits that aren't caught by either side, that our reaction time is good and we're, we're mopping up that sort of work. So we can get a lot of a source of possession from that too. So, you know, hopefully we'll be on our, on, on our game in that area. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. When you, when you look at the South Africa side, you almost see that bench and you go, blimey. Um, ben, ben Carter's on yours. What, what are you sort of looking for from him? Oh, look, what a, what, a, what a great moment for him. You know, this is, you know, Alan Wynn when he was young. Obviously came into test matches and, and w- w- he was up against a lot more experienced sides and, and players. And that's how you learn. Uh, it's a bapti- baptism of fire sometimes. And it certainly will be the case. Look, we've got two big men in the second row. And um, we'd like them to go for a major part of the game. No different to Retallick and, and Whitelock and, and the South African boys. So but we'll put the onus on our boys to do do a lot of work. And then um, if Ben gets an opportunity, then uh, I'm sure he's going to relish it and learn a lot. Because he's an exciting prospect, isn't he? That's the key word, prospect. With yeah, he is. And we've just got to remember how old he is and how much rugby he's played at senior level. Um, but, you know, with injuries, all of a sudden, guys are thrust into this sort of environment. And uh, as I say... Um, it's going to be a great learning. Cresta, cheers, Thank you.